teaching blind obedience. The purported purpose of school is to teach reading, writing, mathematics, and other academic fields of thought. But the message that institutions of education actually teach far more effectively than any useful knowledge or skills is the idea that subservience and blind obedience to authority are virtues. Simply consider the environment in which the majority of people spend most of their formative years. Year after year, students live in a world in which they receive approval, praise, and reward for being where authority tells them to be, when authority tells them to be there. They receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for being anywhere else. This includes the fact that they are coerced into being in school to begin with. They receive approval, praise, and reward for doing what authority tells them to do. They receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for doing anything else or for failing to do what authority tells them to do. They receive approval, praise, and reward for speaking when and how authority tells them to speak and receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for speaking at any other time, in any other way, or about any subject other than what authority tells them to speak about or for failing to speak when authority tells them to speak. They receive approval, praise, and reward for repeating back whatever ideas the authority declares to be true and important, and receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for disagreeing, verbally or on a written test, with the opinions of those claiming to be authority, or for thinking or writing about subjects other than what authority tells them to think or write about. They receive approval, praise, and reward for immediately telling authority about any problems or personal conflicts they encounter and receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for trying to solve any problems or settle any disputes on their own. They receive approval, praise, and reward for complying with whatever rules, however arbitrary, authority decides to oppose upon them. They receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for disobeying any such rules. These rules can be about almost anything, including what clothes to wear, what hairstyles to have, what facial expressions to have, how to sit in a chair, what to have on a desk, what direction to face, and what words to use. They receive approval, praise, and reward for telling the authority when another student has disobeyed the rules and receive disapproval, reproach, and punishment for failing to do so. The students clearly and immediately see that in their world, there are two distinct classes of people, masters, teachers, and subjects, students. And the rules of proper behavior are drastically different for the two groups. The masters constantly do things that they tell the subjects not to do. Boss people around, control others via threats, take property from others, etc. This constant and obvious double standard teaches the subjects that there is a very different standard of morality for the masters than there is for the subjects. The subjects must do whatever the masters tell them to do, and only what the masters tell them to, while the masters can do pretty much anything they want. Not long ago, the masters would even routinely commit physical assault i.e. corporal punishment, against subjects who did not quickly and unquestioningly do as they were told while telling the subjects that it was completely unacceptable for them to ever use physical violence, even in self-defense, especially in self-defense against the masters. Thankfully, the use of regular, overt physical violence by teachers has become uncommon. However, through the Though the force has become less obvious, the basic methods of authoritarian control and punishment remain. In the classroom, in the classroom setting, the authority can change the rules at will, can punish the entire group for what one does, and can question or search any students or all students at any time. The authority is never seen having any obligation to justify or explain to the students the rules it makes or anything else that it does. And it is of no concern to authority whether a student has a good reason to think that us time would that time would be better spent somewhere else doing something else or thinking about something else. The grades the student receives, the way he is treated, 
The signals he has sent, written, verbal, and otherwise, all depend upon one factor, his ability and willingness to unquestioningly subvert his own desires, judgment, and decisions to those of authority. If he does that, he is deemed good. If he does not, he is deemed bad. This method of indoctrination was not accidental. Schooling in the United States, and in fact in much of the world, was deliberately modeled after the Prussian system of education, which was designed with the express purpose of training people to be obedient tools of the ruling class. Easy to manage, quick to unthinkingly obey, especially for military purposes. It was explained by Johann Fichte, one of the designers of the Prussian system, the goal of this method was to fashion the student in such a way that he simply cannot will otherwise than what those in authority want him to will. At the same time, the system openly admitted to be a means of psychologically enslaving the general populace to the will of the ruling class, and it continues to, and it continues to accomplish exactly that all over the world, including in the United States. The reason most people do whatever authority tells them to, regardless of whether the command is moral or rational, is because that is exactly what they were trained to do. Everything about authoritarian schooling and authoritarian parenting, even the modern version that pretends to be caring and open-minded, continually hammers into the heads of youngsters the notion that their success, their goodness, their very worth as human beings is measured by how well they obey authority. Is it any wonder, then, that rather than applying logic to evidence to reach their own conclusion, most adults look for an authority to tell them what to think? Is it any wonder that when a man with a bad starts barking orders, most adults timidly obey without question, even if they've done nothing wrong? Is it any wonder that most adults sheepishly submit to whatever interrogations and searches law enforcers want to inflict upon them? Is it any wonder that many adults will run to the nearest authority to solve any problem or settle any dispute? Is it any wonder that most adults will comply with an order, however irrational, unfair, or immoral it may be, if they imagine the one giving the order to have authority? Should any of this be surprising in light of the fact that nearly everyone went through many years of being deliberately trained to behave that way? Dr. Milgram's experiments made it quite clear that the kind of people produced, even by our modern, supposedly enlightened society, even in the good old USA, that supposed bastion of liberty and justice are, for the most part, callous, irresponsible, unthinking tools for whichever megalomaniac claims the right to rule. When the people are intentionally trained to humbly submit to the beast called authority, when they are taught that it is more important to obey than it is to judge, why should we be at all surprised at the extortion, oppression, terrorism, and mass murder that are committed just because a self-proclaimed authority commanded it? All of human history makes the deadly formula as plain as it could possibly be. A few evil rulers plus many obedient subjects equals widespread injustice and oppression.